All right, I'm just looking at my form versus seasons past. Belgium's always been pretty good to us. Um, yeah. I'm just seeing what I can do versus past seasons. And um, we've lost a little bit of dominance over the field, which is kind of a good thing. Even though I like being dominant, it makes the races a little bit more interesting. My margin of error is lower, it forces me to be better at the game. Makes the races a little bit more interesting. Okay. Oh, only five tenths. I'm not going to qualify in anything other than the standard. Than the standard setup. There's no reason to um, start this race on anything but soft tires if we only need to use two compounds, the two softest compounds. Got to be a little careful. We can unravel this all the way up our rouge. It's going to take a little bit before I'm off to be on the safe side. I don't know if it'll actually take max throttle. An ERS hot lap. It's going to be time to do another lap at this point. Precarious. We did survive. Okay. I can't do that again. But I just got... I cranked late and we just didn't make the corner. It's basically the crux of it. We're going to have a lot of people, maybe not actually. Botas is the only one that's actually trying to get through on the mediums. Five minutes left for this session. All right.
Yeah, that could have gotten very bad there. I could have failed to make Q2. Back one, okay. Sometimes some of these quarters are really awkward on controller. Like that one you have to kind of time, especially when you're pulling through on higher throttle levels. We just obliterate the field with uh, our lap time. Okay, obliterate might be too strong of a word. We actually cleared it by a tenth. Oh, not even that. Calderon struggling. Find more time. one needs to be the doozy. Yeah, I kind of entered very carefully. But otherwise flat out. Decent. I'm going to flash back because it's just...
It's not I'm not actually making a mistake. It's how that corner is designed to work. It doesn't jive well for a D-pad. This is probably the only time it'll give me trouble. Fantastic. You've got pole. But it's just because um there's a little bit extra kick and it's we don't get a lot of practice running at the speed we're running, basically. With qualifying finished. It's time to remind ourselves of our top three. Williams, Bottas, and Alexander Albon. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. But it's basically... <sighs> yeah, like you have to push it and stop pushing it and then push it again to get a certain amount of cornering and with the qualifying pace... The margin of error and how you do that is very narrow. And I just took a flashback because I don't particularly like how narrow it is. Ironically, with weaker cars, it's fine. Like, it's less of an issue. Biting my nails too much. Need to stop doing that. All right, I think we can call that a successful qualifying. We should be in with a good chance in the race. Okay. Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the race that gave us the maiden victory for the Jordan team in 1998. And in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardane Forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there really is no place quite like Spa. Joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Williams. They've got a really good lead in the championship going into this weekend. So it feels to me that they've got one hand on the trophy. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. But yeah, I, I, I let the mistake stand in Q1. But then I made it again, I'm like, you know, it's not so much a mistake as it's the controller thing. And it doesn't really jive with, like, the car upgrades and stuff. It's really weird to explain. But it tends to work okay at race pace. But I guess we'll see. Maybe there's more that I'm going to need to do. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Big long wit. Yeah. Oops. 
play that in. Oh. Let's push for another podium this weekend. Good luck. Yeah, it actually is believed to be quicker. Seeing any technical issues coming off the practice start? Watch the RPM on the full start. We don't want to bog down. I'm kind of hoping this goes smoothly and I can just start looking after the car. I might go into hards, I haven't decided yet. If I can make these tires last, then we'll probably just stick with the plan to go on to mediums. How we approach this race is really going to depend. And how this start goes. I believe it is a short run up to the first corner, which works in our favor. be a shortish race. The rest of the grid is forming up. Be patient and watch for the lights. Sorry, just a second. Got a Do a quick uh, little debris wipe off of the keyboard. Okay. It's going to throw down. Botas actually looks like he had a bad start. Yeah, just a bad start. Nothing to do with me. Which is usually what you think. You will turn off the... Uh, Alban is sticking to us like glue. Alright, we're looking good so far. Lap one is where they're going to be pushing the hardest though. Trying to maximize their starting position.
Alright. Deep breath. Grip might prove problematic for me. Again, it's a little easier at race pace. Just being very, very careful. Using up the tires. That was the fastest lap of the race. Keep this up. We're leading our teammate by five point nine seconds. See if I can take care of the car. Got to be careful now.
Yeah, we're gonna have to speed up a little bit. deployed the virtual safety car has been deployed we need to keep a positive delta here slow down maintain a positive delta drop your speed our delta is too low and we risk a penalty slow your pace immediately yeah this Gap does not feel very safe. until the green flags. Green flag. And yeah, I always gets a perfect launch off of the end of VSCs. It's very annoying. Oh, I know. Believe me, I know. That's where things start to look a little encouraging. I needed to, I'd probably go on to a set of two softs. like lap 10 
boxing this lap. Give us the best in lap you can. The car behind is dropping back by about three tenths a lap. Which I definitely like and appreciate seeing. I do kind of need the AI to blink first. Because we don't really have a, uh, a good gap, and I don't want to fall to 10th. Elbon's pitting. really about it's really about where I think I can bring the car out in a relatively good place And there's a wide, a wide run. We're out of undercut range. Yeah, I don't think our delta is 23 seconds. Not here. Well, we are about to find out.
Here we go. One of the most challenging pit lanes. In and out. 2.2 seconds is good. Look after these tires now. We want to finish the race on this compound. Played a little bit cool coming out. Caution, caution. Okay, clear. Calderon on the hard tires is definitely interesting. Awkward. If we have a bit of faster slap, this is where we need to see it. Excess fuel. We'll be back on target soon. Don't wait too long to turn the engine down. I just need complete focus to attempt this fastest lap. And I don't think anyone's really touching our pace. So I don't think we need to worry too much about it not holding up. Let me see. Albon, nowhere near. Botas was overtaken by Calderon. Interesting.
No, our race pace relative to Calderon is what we really need to keep an eye on. Plenty good, plenty fast. Gap to teammate behind is 9.8 seconds. They're on fresh hearts. They're in third. The time last lap was a 144.3. Whoops. It's more about top speeding though than anything else. Carry too much speed. your overtake button more, it's time to utilize some of this energy. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. As long as Calderon doesn't start closing in, we're um, in really good shape. In older games, um, the hardest tire was the optimal strategy, but I don't think that's the case anymore. Or if it is, it's not as clear kind of an advantage as it's been in past games. Yeah, see, she seems to have issues finding general race pace. At least versus mine. You're pulling out a second a lap on the car behind. All things considered, I'm su surprised Botas got overtaken considering the qualifying positions.
one behind. Okay, the gap behind is 10.0 seconds. They're on old mediums. Their tires are six laps old. The time last lap was a 1 minute 43.0. One forty two point five, not a bad time. There's static over the radio, say again. We're leading our teammate by 11.9 seconds. They're on old hearts. They're in third. The time last lap was a 1.42.6. Yeah, right, we're still a little quicker. Of fuel remaining. In fact, the reporting is old is encouraging, especially considering my own tire wear isn't all that bad. One forty one eight. Also, I kind of mean she's not good on her tires. Feels like the pace delta is about the same. And um, rather how quickly it comes off the tire. Flash that back. I'm just kind of overthinking the corner now. If I had a steering wheel, it would be no trouble. Stock speeds would matter too. So our approach speed would be nowhere close to what it is now.
a slight variation in when you're steering with D-pad and how you approach each corner. And tell you where it actually starts making, actually getting that corner a little bit more difficult. Because the, the precision level rises a bit. Ironically, when the car is performing worse, that corner is less of an issue. We're achieving... We're achieving top speeds you don't really see otherwise. In um, F1... Guy's getting nowhere near 210 with stock cars. be easy to eliminate a lot of these problems simply by just like raising the downforce. And maybe our average speed even would be a little bit better. Kind of why I wish R and D wasn't the way it is. Let's use overtake and burn some of this energy. Stepping out of traction a little bit. Yeah, I just need to worry about finishing. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. There's only one lap of fuel remaining. Maybe this is a little bit easier with uh, hard tires too. Who knows? Not sure if they're really this much faster, they're just pacing up because it's the end of the race.
Yeah, our own tires seem to be dropping off pretty steeply. And the AI doesn't seem to feel that drop off. Which I personally think is kind of bogus, but whatever. Absolutely awesome. Just amazing. Well done. A nearly flawless performance here then, and a commanding victory. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I think that smart tire management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tires at all times. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Yeah, there's a lot with having a fully upgraded car that makes some of these tracks kind of weird. Especially the D-pad controller. With an actual steering wheel, some of these things are a little bit less of a problem, but... Yay, extra experience points. Yeah, actually done in an hour and 30 minutes. Let's review the driver's standings. Williams increases their championship lead. Now, let's discuss, Ants. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? Let's give it to Esteban Ocon. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive. Yeah, they actually feel race director this. Like, Calderon finds a second of pace at the end there. I don't really like the way they, um, they sprint at the end with those lap times. For more exciting Formula One action soon. Whatever. Actually, Italy will probably be a little bit longer, and if I were to run the next race, it would be like 3.30 or later by the time I'm done. So we'll act we actually are going to stop with Belgium today. We'll do Italy another day. But I think I have like enough material now, like between Knights of the Old Republic being about to finish this, and Dragon Quest 7, probably to go into August at this point. Which is good because my streaming content is kind of going to be uh, iffy over the summer. There's just like a lot of time I'll be going to be not streaming. Naturally, because it's summer and you want to get out there and have fun and all that. Sorry. I saw something that my OCD needed to adjust. Another general durability upgrade goes on the car. And I'll just jump into the race weekend to see if we're dealing with any rain. And then we'll call it a stream. Call it a night. Alright, um, 
again, could be a little bit of rain in here. Could just be completely dry. Not sure. But yeah, we'll go from here. Just kind of a quick one tonight, just to you know, let everyone know I'm still here. I'm still streaming, even though the content might be a little bit less now. And it's not like I'm going to be gone the entire summer, but um, there's definitely going to be times where I'm less active than I, I will be at other times. So just, you know, be prepared for that. Uh, but yeah, for now, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you haven't, haven't already done so, feel free to follow button one time or sub, like, and share if you're watching on YouTube. Till next time, guys, take care. Have a great one. We'll see you again next time. Till then, later on, guys.